Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 8 of Zero to CSWP. In this episode, all we're going to be doing is covering what you need to know for the segment 2 of the CSWP exam, covering what we learned in the past two episodes. To download all the parts you need for the exam, I'll put a link to the description where you can go to GrabCAD and download the SOLIDWORKS parts you need, as well follow along with the video for the different questions that I'm going to ask. With that out of the way, let's just jump right into SOLIDWORKS. I'll go through the questions for our practice here. The first part of our questions are about using design tables to control the configurations of a quarter inch bolt. The second questions are about editing a custom part, making changes to existing features, and creating your own. You will notice there is no new part creation, as you do not need to make your own parts in segment 2 of the CSWP exam. For the questions with our bolt, the questions rely on a design table. If we take a look in the configuration manager, there is no design table linked to the part. A design table in the form of an Excel spreadsheet is supplied, so this means to answer the following question, we need to add in the Excel table as our design table. Remember, the link to all of this is in the description. To add in a design table, let's select the design table button from our tables toolbar we enabled in the last episode. Then, since the design table has already been created as an Excel table, let's select the From File option, select the provided table, and then the design table is added in without any issues. We can see after opening the design table that quite a few configurations are added. The first question is quite simple, just asking the mass of a certain design table configuration. The questions in this practice may seem easier than those in segment 1 mainly because segment 2 is generally easier and a shorter segment than segment 1. So don't feel weird if this practice may seem more intuitive than the first practice episode we did. If it doesn't feel more intuitive, that's no worry. Some parts of SOLIDWORKS are harder for different people. For me, I love assemblies, and design tables tend to struggle with. The design table configuration we need to first analyze is 0.25-28-1.5 P0.5. We can select it from the different configurations and then go to our mass properties tool. Because the mass of the part is so small, the question asks us to use four decimals of accuracy, which we can change in the options of the mass properties tool. We get an answer, which you can check either by following along with the video or by checking in the description if you plan on doing the practice by yourself. In the next question, it asks us to find the configuration with the material that is not the same as the others, and then take the mass of that part. We can open the design table to look at all of the properties to find the material property, and then look which material isn't the same as the other. We can see that usually cast alloy steel is the material assigned. However, in this cell, plain carbon steel is applied to the configuration. We can open this configuration up, take its mass properties, find the mass, and there we have our answer. Next question asks for a value of a property in a certain configuration. The exam wants to know the value of the dollar sign state at partial thread. Basically, just the state of the partial thread, whether it's suppressed or unsuppressed. In the configuration 0.25-20-2.5p0.5. We can see the cell says U. U means unsuppressed, and so does zero, whereas a one or S means suppressed. These shorthands may be used in the exam in the table. In an exam situation, this question might be a multiple choice selection. If there is a U, you would want to select that as it is the exact value. However, let's say it only lists unsuppressed as a correct answer, along with other incorrect answers for example, suppressed or a numerical value. Then, in that case, you would select unsuppressed as U means unsuppressed. In design tables, using these shorthands can be much quicker than writing out suppressed or unsuppressed in full. The second last question asks us how many configurations have a value of 0.3125 in the pitch property. In the design table, 
we count 5, and that would be the answer to this question. Notice these questions analyze your ability to read and use the design table more than the actual configurations. You will likely get a few of these types of questions on the exam. Then lastly, it asks us to create a new configuration. It says for us to base the configuration on the existing configuration 0.25-20-2.5. So we will create a new configuration with the name given in the question 0.25-20-2.5p025. Then we will copy the row of properties from our base configuration and paste it into our new configuration. Then lastly, we will change the new given properties for this configuration as given in the question. Notice the question told us to base it off the previous configuration and only gave us a few properties to change. You only need to change those properties and keep the rest the same. We will change this feature to unsuppressed with a U and then change this value to 0 0.25 as given in the question. As long as you have a solid grasp of design tables, these questions should be a cakewalk. My only advice for practicing design tables further, if you want to, would be to create a simple part and play around with design tables. In some cases, they can be a little bit finicky due to the fact that they need very specific information and syntax. So by using them yourself, much like everything else in SolidWorks, you will improve your competency. In the next set of questions, we are given a different part. So we will open that up to start this section of our practice. These questions are focused on your ability to edit pre-existing parts, changing features, sketches, and adding your own as needed. In the first question, it asks us to change two existing dimensions with new values that are given. You will notice that the dimensions the question asks to change are listed with letters instead of the actual dimension they were or want to be changed to. The value of these are listed in the question itself. We see the interior angles of the part want to be changed to the listed value of 75 degrees as they are both listed as the angle A. We can open up the sketch where the base is created to see that these dimensions were originally 80 degrees. We can change the dimensions, completing the first half of this question. The other listed dimension is the outside eight fillets being changed to a radius of 1.5 inches. We can open up the fillet feature responsible for the outside fillets and change the value from 1 to 1.5. Once we are done changing this value, we can open our mass properties to get our answer. In this question, it asks for three decimals of accuracy. So again, we can change our mass properties option to set it to that. The next few questions simply ask us to add or edit some features instead of just changing values. The ability to do this fundamentally comes from your modeling ability. So as long as you feel comfortable with modeling, which is what episodes one through five cover, you should be okay. This question asks us to change this section of the part so that instead of a straight slot, there are two circles and a slot-like cavity in the center. Since there is no change in the thickness of that section, we do not need to make any new features or edit the current one. We simply need to change the sketch. I will add in the circles, offset, and trim as necessary, making sure to adhere to the drawing dimensions and keeping it all defined.
Then, once I am done, we can again take the mass and get our answer. The next edit to our part, and the next question we have to answer, are these raised sections with holes. Since there is no way to make both an extruded cut and boss at the same time, we will first make the boss of the raised profile, and then we will make sure to cut it. I will make a sketch on the bottom face, making the profile of what needs to be extruded, making sure to fully define it. Then, I will extrude it up to the surface. Then I can make a sketch on this top face and position the holes we need, utilizing the concentric relations that are created. We can do a cut up to next or through all, it has the same outcome, and then use the mass properties tool to get our answer. The next feature is this cut on these angled faces. Again, we can create the cuts by sketching on this face and then using the mirror button to mirror the cut feature we create. In the sketch I'm going to make sure to use all of the listed dimensions and make sure it's fully defined. Again, this all comes down to your sketching abilities. Then we can take the mass of the part and get our answer. The last question are these grooves on the inner section of our part. We can create a single cut feature to make a single groove and then use the linear pattern to make the rest. To create our first cut, we can create a plane offset to the dimension 
where one groove starts, and then use the blind end condition to give the depth of cut. In our sketch, we can use the convert entities and then offset to define everything we need. Then, we can use the linear pattern pattern it as per the listed dimension, and our features are done. And like always, we can use the mass properties tool to take the mass of our part. As you can see, Part 2 of the CSWP focuses on design tables and editing parts. As long as you feel comfortable with this, you'll be comfortable on the exam. If you didn't get the right answers, or you're not sure about a certain section of this practice, feel free to comment or email me. I'm really happy to help, and I'd love to answer your questions. Thanks for watching episode 8 of Zero to CSWP. I really hope you learned something, and that now you're able to take the CSWP exam part 2. In the next episode, we're going to start segment 3 of the exam, which covers assemblies. So, I'll see you there. And, good luck on the CSWP exam, part 2.